Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our very first pre recorded lesson for uh, Algebra 1. We are going to start today with our topic 5 3 notes. We've already done lessons 1 and 2. And my seventh period Algebra 1 class, you all have actually done this lesson already. You have all the notes for it. Uh, so you should be able to do the homework, but you can always watch this video to get a refresher on it. Our homework has changed a little bit from what I had assigned you, uh, and I'll go over that with you at the very end of uh, the lesson. So this should only take about 25, 30 minutes, and I'm just gonna go through example by example, and then uh, you should be able to do your work. And if you have any questions about the work, you can email me. Um, we will be, I will be inviting you to a live meeting on Thursday, if you're a Tuesday, Thursday class, and on Friday for a Wednesday, Friday class, and you can ask me questions then as well. Um, and then also help class is on uh, Monday, and you should have gotten my letter already explaining to you um, those help class times. And so I'll send out an invite for that as well. So here we go. Um, we are just continuing from topic 5-2, multiplication properties of exponents. So now we just have more multiplication properties of exponents. There's so many variations of how to work with exponents that we had uh, two lessons on it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Whenever you multiply powers that are raised to a power, you're multiplying the exponents. Okay, that's important. When we are multiplying with exponents generally, remember we add those exponents together. But anytime you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you have to multiply them. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. In these examples up here, we have a to the m power raised to the n. So that would just be a to the m times the n. Okay, let's apply that to real numbers. 5 to the power of 4 raised to the power of 2 is just 5 to the power of 4 times 2, which gives you 5 to the power of 8. Um, a to the power of 3 halves raised to the power of 3 is just 3 halves times 3, which gives you a to the power of 9 halves. And I want you all to go ahead and leave your fractions as improper uh, like we have been doing. Please don't change any of your exponents to decimals or mixed numbers. Okay. All right, so let's get uh, started with example one. We have n to the power of three times seven, since it's raised to the power of seven, and that would give us n to the power of 21. Now, some of you may want to know, well, why is this happening? What's actually going on? Some of you may not, but I'm going to explain it anyway. So if I have n to the power of three, that means n times n times n. So I could write that, n times n times n, okay? But in this problem, it's asking us to do that seven times. So if I have seven groups of three n's, I mean, I can, I can continue to write out those groups of n's. I'm not going to. Uh, basically, what you're doing is you're just multiplying the three times the seven groups of three, which gives you 21. Okay? So that's what you're doing in this case. All right, let's go ahead and go to example two. We have n to the power of nine times one half because it's raised to the one power of one half. Now, um, this is just the same as nine over one, so we're just gonna multiply straight across. And we end up with nine times one is nine and one times two is two, so n to the power of nine halves. Now with this, you should be able to do examples three and four if you want to stop the video or pause the video uh, and try those. Um, and then you can skip through it and see what the answers are. Check your answers, make sure they're right. If they aren't right, I would rewind the video and figure out what you did wrong. Um, if they are right, then you can go ahead and just skip the next two and wait for example five. Okay, so we have n to the power of two thirds times the power of one half, which gives us n to the power of two sixths. Now, anytime you have a fraction uh, that is an exponent, you can simplify them. So I'm going to simplify this one. n to the power of one 
third. And some of you may have cross simplified here and that is okay also, I usually do that. All right, n to the power of four fifths times five halves gives us, and I'll go ahead and cross simplify here because I can do that. Our fives can simplify out to ones, our two to a one and our four to a two. It is kind of small and hard to see, um, but you know, you could do it either way, which really gives us n squared into the power of two over one. Now, if you didn't cross simplify, you would have gotten n to the power of 20 over 10, but 20 over 10 is the same as 20 divided by 10. 20 divided by 10 is two, so n squared. So either way is okay. Okay, let's go on to example five. Now we're dealing with negative exponents. And if you remember uh, in math, we don't want negative exponents. We have to rearrange the problem to get rid of that negative. So uh, if you have a negative in your numerator, you move it down to your denominator. If you have a negative in your denominator, you move it down to the numerator, I mean up to the numerator. And you only move the terms that are raised to a negative exponent. So don't try to move any of the other terms in the problem, just the ones that are raised to a negative exponent. Okay, so here we go. We have n to the power of three times negative five, which gives you n to the power of negative 15. Okay, we can't have that negative. Uh, just imagine that there is a one under this term, and we are gonna move that n to the power of negative 15 to the bottom. Um, also, you can imagine that there is a one there because remember in front of every variable, if you don't see a coefficient, there's an imaginary one. So really you're gonna leave the one there. The one is not being raised to a negative power. It's not being raised to any power. Um, so we leave the one there and we move our n to the negative 15 down. So it would look like Okay, you can put a one there, move that one over, but you don't have to, you can leave it just like this, okay? All right, example six, we have, I know this thing is in the way, but I don't know how else to make this, it's kind of crazy right now. I'll try to make it better next time. All right, we have r to the power of one fourth times negative 12, and remember we could put a one under that, and then we can go ahead and I can cross simplify these. So four divided by four is one, negative 12 divided by four is negative three. So I end up with r to the power of negative three over one, which is just r to the power of negative three. Okay. Oh, we're not done. Oh, it's about to be finished. Okay, we have to move that down. So one over r. Third. Okay. All right, moving on to example seven. Okay, in this example, we have multiple terms here. So the R that is by itself will be multiplied in last. And remember, anytime you have a variable like this and you're multiplying with exponents, uh, or other variables with exponents, you can put an imaginary one. It's like having that imaginary one right here in front of the end. There's always an imaginary one um, uh, exponent that we just don't ever write it. So I'm gonna rewrite this as r to the power of one, and then I'm gonna multiply that times r to the power of negative six times negative four, okay? Uh, because negative, r to the negative sixth power is being raised to the power of negative four. So we have to multiply those exponents together. And uh, notice these are negative. Some of you are gonna wanna do some rearranging, but I would wait till the end because in this case, negative times a negative gives you a positive and you really don't have to move anything around. If you unnecessarily move something around then you just have to do it again and you've created extra steps that you really don't need. So I have r to the power of negative one times r to the power of 24. And we're not done. If you remember from lesson one, that anytime you're multiplying powers, 
actually this is from lesson two, anytime you're multiplying with exponents, you actually add those exponents together. So in this case, we have r to the power of 25. And don't let what I just said confuse you from multiplying variables with powers versus multiplying variables raised to a power that is also raised to a power. It's a little bit different. And hopefully I didn't just confuse you. Okay, we're gonna do the exact same thing here that we did over here. It's just another practice problem. So we have r to the first power times r to the negative seventh times the negative eight. This equals r to the first times r to the power of 56. And then we add those exponents and we get r to the power of 57. Okay, there we go, first section done. Um, the next section is very similar, except you are, um, you might have multiple terms within a parenthesis. And so let's look at this one, how to multiply a product to a power. So in this case, we have the product of 5a and the whole thing is being raised to the power of three. So the key to this is that you want to apply the exponent to both expressions within that parenthesis, and then you can solve just like we did above. Okay, so that's really one additional step that you do at the very beginning. So in this case, three is going to be applied to both five and a. Okay, so we have five to the power of three and a to the power of three. Okay, are we done? No, I would like for you to go ahead and simplify five to the power of three. And uh, after you do so many of these, you'll start to see patterns of numbers and remember, oh, five to the power of three is 125 and you won't have to do that multiplication. So in this case, it's 125 times a to the power of three. Okay. Example 10, we have four raised to the power of negative three and we have g raised to the power of negative three. All right, we can't do anything else with this yet until we move it uh, to the bottom because we have negative exponents. So we will rewrite this as one over four thirds times g third to the power of three. And you're gonna see four thirds a lot in this lesson and some in your homework, um, but four to the power of three is, 64. Okay. And there you go. I believe you should be able to do example 11 and 12 uh, based on what we've done already if you'd like to pause the video and I'm just going to keep going. Okay, example 11. We have 4 to the negative third times g to the negative fifth times negative third. Okay, so in this case, this is a little bit different. Um, you have a power being raised to a power, so don't forget that when you have a power raised to a power, you multiply those exponents together. And so um, we end up with four to the power of negative three times g to the power of 15. Now, earlier I said you wanna do your rearranging at the end so that you can possibly prevent extra steps. And this is the case. So some people may have wanted to go ahead and start moving things around. But since we're multiplying a negative times a negative, we end up with a positive. And so we don't have to move our variable g to the power of 15. We only have to move the 4 to the power of negative 3. So we have g to the power of 15 over 4 to the power of 3. That does not look like a 15. And yes, I still have my white out. And like I said, we're going to see a 4 to the power of 3 quite a bit. So our final answer is g to the power of 15 over 64. Now, I know that this seems like a lot of steps, um, but I need to make sure that you understand those steps. So you will need to show all of your work. Don't forget to do that. Okay. Example 12 to the power of negative two times r to the power of negative four times a negative two. Okay. So we have two to the power of negative two times r to the power of eight 
and we have to move this one down. So r to the power of eight over two squared, r to the power of eight over four. All right. Example 13. Okay, so you're going to notice on this one, you have AB to the third power raised to the negative first power, and then you have AB to the third power raised to no power. Okay, so let's just say, remember, if there's no exponent, we can say that that's one, right? So you have the exact same base term, AB to the power of three. And you can, oops right, like this, and then you have negative one plus one. So really what you have is a b to the power of three to the power of zero. And remember, anything raised to a power of zero equals one. So that one was pretty simple. There is another way to do this. Um, and so I'll show you that just in case this little part confused you. You could apply this negative one to both terms. So you have a negative one, b negative three, and then you have a b three, okay, from this one, because there's no, it's not raised. If it's raised to the power of one, then it's just a to the first, b to the third, okay? And so I could put an imaginary one right there if you want. Notice how a to the negative one and a to the one, they cancel out. It ends up becoming a to the power of zero and then b to the negative three and b to the third cancel out, so it becomes b to the power of zero. Well, those both equal one, so one times one equals one. So that's another way of looking at it if, if that confused you here. Okay. All right, going on to example 14. So we have the same situation, and I, you have the same base term, x to the fifth, y to the four, and then x to the fifth, y to the fourth. And so you could just write that out like I did the first time. It's, it's a little bit less work. So you could do x to the fifth, y to the fourth, seven minus eight, okay, or plus a negative eight if, if, if that works for you. So really what you have is you have x to the fifth, y to the fourth, all both raised to the power of negative one. Okay, so I'm going to come down here and do my next step. Negative one times five, so I have x to the negative fifth times y, negative four times negative one is negative four. Notice they're, they're both negatives, so I am going to want to put, move those down to a denominator and write it like this, x to the fifth, y to the fourth, voila we have our final answer. Page one, check. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to page two. Page one on our notes, by the way, is all the notes that you need to be able to do page one of your homework. All right, we are moving on now to um, scientific notation. So we're gonna apply the concept of raising scientific notation to a power. And same rule applies. You are applying that exponent on the outside of the scientific notation parenthesis to both terms within the parenthesis. So apply the exponent to both expressions. And then you're gonna simplify the expression like you would anything else, okay? In this case, three is being raised to the power of four. And 10 to the power of five is raised to the power of four, which means that you will be taking 10 to the power of four times, um, I'm sorry, 10 to the power of five times four, okay? So we can go ahead and simplify this. Three to the power of four is 81. Three times three is nine. Three times three is nine. Nine times nine is 81. So 81 times 10 to the power of 20. Now, if you remember from our previous notes, uh, I believe it was lesson two, that whenever you have scientific notation, 
the correct way to write it is to make sure that there is a decimal behind the very first number. Now, a lot of you are getting confused about what is the first number. So in this case, is the eight the first number or is the one? Some of you may be saying, no, I already know eight's the first number. Great. But for those of you who get a little bit confused by, by that, I want you to think about reading a word. When you read a word, you start at the first letter. So in the word example, our very first letter is E. You start with E and you read the word. You sound out all those letters. Well, I want you to look at your number like that also. Start from the left and read your number. So if you start from the left, that first number is going to be the eight. So you need to make sure that your decimal is placed behind the eight. Okay, well, in this case, we don't see a decimal. And like I said before, any, every whole number has an imaginary decimal at the very end of it. We just don't write it. Just like we don't write a one in front of the variable uh, if there's no coefficient, okay? So I'm gonna place my decimal at the very end of my number and I have to move it so that it is behind my eight. So I move it over once to the left, okay? Now I can rewrite my number as 8.1. Okay, if you remember from our previous set of notes, anytime you move the decimal one place to the left, that means that you are actually adding to the exponent plus one. Anytime you move your decimal to the right, you're subtracting one. I always think of that as like opposite of the number line. So in this case, because we moved it one space to the left over here, we're gonna add one to our exponent. So then I can finish out my answer times 10 to the power of 21. There you go. All right, let's try number 16. Remember four to the third, there you go, you're gonna see it wasn't nine. Okay, we're gonna have to move our decimal again. One place to the left, add one to the exponent. There you go. Uh, number 17 and 18 are the same, except now you have, you're going to end up with negative exponents. Remember, though, in scientific notation, you do not move um, your negative exponents around. You leave them there. That's just how scientific notation is. Okay, so example 17, we have 2 to the power of 4 times 10 to the power of negative 8 times 4. Okay, 2 times 2 is 4. 16 times 10 to the power of negative 32. So place our imaginary decimal, move it over once to the left, add one to the exponent. 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 31. Negative 32 plus one is negative 31. Okay, last one on scientific notation. Seven to the power of three times 10 to the power of negative two times three. Seven to the power of three. I've done these so many times, you guys. I've memorized seven to the power of three. It is 343 times 10 to the power of negative six. Now this one's a little bit different uh, only because we are um, gonna be moving our decimal around a little bit more. Okay, so in this case, we place our decimal here, and now we have to move it not only once, but twice. So that means that we're gonna add two to the exponent instead of one. Okay, so we end up with 3.43 times 10 to the power of negative four. All right. Okay, moving on to the last section. This section is very similar to one we've done before. You're just basically finding the missing variable. And what this means is that you're taking the properties of exponents 
uh, the rules to them that you already know and you're applying them to these problems. So um, you know that anytime you have a power raised to a power, you have to multiply those powers together. So what that means in this case, if you look at example 19, five times whatever X is is gonna give you 15. Now I know that you can all do that in your head and I appreciate that, but you need to show your work on these. Okay, so you're gonna set up your equation and then you're gonna solve it. So in this case, and setting up an equation is going to be key. You have five times X, which is just five X, is gonna equal 15 because five times whatever that X is gives you that new power. And you divide by five, divide by five. My fives cancel out here. Actually, they don't cancel out. They equal one. One X is just X. And 15 divided by five is three. So you're missing power and you just proved your answer that you already knew in your head. Okay. Number 20 is very similar. You have seven times X equals 21. Isolate that variable by dividing both sides by seven and X equals three again. Okay, now we're gonna try some with fractions. Okay, so problem 21. Whenever you're looking to figure out a missing variable, so in this case, we have b to the x, we need to know what that x is. All we have to do is focus on that term. We don't have to worry about 2 and 18. Okay, so I know that b to the x raised to the fourth power is 4x, and it is going to equal 4 thirds. So I can set up my equation, 4x equals 4 thirds. So a lot of you are like, oh, I don't know what to do now. I have fractions, freak me out. That's okay. Okay, so remember whenever we are dividing with fractions, we multiply by the reciprocal and that's all we're gonna do here. So in this case, I'm gonna put a one under my four and then I can take four over one, multiply by the reciprocal, one fourth. That cancels that out so that we can isolate our variable um, and we multiply this one by one fourth, okay? So in this case, we end up with x equals four twelfths, and we can simplify that to one third. You could have also cross simplified here and gotten the same answer, okay? So in this case, x equals one third. One other thing I wanted to let you know too is that you could go back and plug that in and check. So we could take, we know that X times four would be one third times four. And we could see, does that equal four thirds? And in this case, yes it does. I've checked my answer, we're good to move on. So if you're ever unsure, you could check your answer that way. Okay, example 22, five times X is going to equal five fourths. We don't have to worry about the 35 or the five in this case. Okay, so five, times x equals five fourths. Again, I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal of one fifth. Okay, so just imagine there's a one there. So I'm gonna cross simplify here and x gives me one fourth. Almost done. All right, example 23, same thing. We have two times X and that should give us, or C squared to the power of X. Okay, so in this case, make sure that I wrote that out right. Um, you know what, let's skip 23. I did not write that out correctly at all. This, this actually should be just to see. I found a mistake on there. Oops. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and change that to C. 
instead of one. Um, so we have two times X is gonna equal what? Well, there's no exponent there. Remember though that there is that imaginary one, okay? So we have two times X is gonna give us one. And we just divide by two to isolate that variable so we can figure out what it is. And in this case, our X is a fraction. Oops, X equals one half. All right, 24 is very similar. We have negative four times X is gonna give us a, remember that imaginary one, one, divide by negative four, divide by negative four, X equals negative one fourth. Okay, last two problems. Okay, so on these two, if you have a copy of the old notes, there was a mistake on this one also. This, if you have the old notes, gave you a 10. It should have been a three. Um, so you can change that if you have the old notes. If you just printed them up off of Google Classroom, then yours is correct, okay? So we are just trying to figure out what this variable is right here, the B, okay? Notice there isn't a B over on in the answer, which means, if you remember the rules, that it is really B to the power of zero. Because whenever you have B to the power of zero, it makes the whole thing one, and you pretty much can get rid of that variable. Okay, so what we have here is X times three, or three X, needs to equal zero. Well, that means that x equals zero in this case, All right? b to the power of zero will cancel out that b so that it's no longer there. Okay, now we're looking at another one that's a little bit different. Notice that in your final answer, you have a to the power of six, b to the power of 12, and it's in your denominator, which means that the original answer was a to the power of negative six, b to the power of negative 12. But they couldn't write it like that because remember that's not the right way to write it. So instead, they moved it down to the denominator, okay? So in a situation like this, you're actually gonna try to figure out what this x is um, by comparing it to the, um, the, the step prior to the final answer, okay? So, in this case, since we have an A and a B that we can use, I'm gonna use both. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use A first, and then I'm gonna check it using B. So with A, we have it to the power of two raised to the power of X, so that's two X, and that is gonna give us a negative six over here. When you solve for X, you get X as negative three. Now I can check that to make sure it's right. So let's look at the, the B. B is raised to the power of four. So we have four X equals a negative 12. So we will solve for X this way. And X equals negative three. So that checks out for both of them. So X equals negative three is the answer. Okay, that was the end of our notes. All right, so what I want you to do now is look at the homework. If you haven't printed it up or you can't see it, um, go ahead and pull that up. And we are going to this. Okay, so you have something that looks like this. Now, I have not uploaded this to Google Classroom yet because I'm pre-recording this. I am gonna try to only uh, upload the very first page. This was actually a two-page assignment but I'm condensing it a little bit. So if I'm unable to just load up the one, then just know that you only need to print up the first page front and back. There are a total of 48 problems on this assignment, but you're not doing them all. You're only gonna do half of that. So you're gonna do, here's your assignment. One through 47 odd, okay? And if you are a Monday, Wednesday class, uh, you will be turning this in on April 2nd, which is uh, Wednesday, April 2nd. Maybe I'll write that down here. 
So you should have gotten this video uh, the Wednesday prior. Okay, and then if you are a Tuesday, Thursday class, it's due Tuesday, April 1st. And no, that's not an April Fool's joke. Um, and your guys's is due on Tuesday. You've already had this lesson. Uh, I already gave you this assignment and you had time to work on it in class. So you probably did a lot more than what you needed to. Uh, you should be ahead of the game. So um, that is our very first uh, video lesson. And um, if you have any questions at all about this, you can email me. Also know though that every Monday we are going to have a live help class meeting. So you can come in on that scheduled meeting. Uh, you can see what time that is on the letter that I emailed to you. Um, and then also I have an additional help class meeting uh, for you all. And so just check out those times and you'll be getting invitations from me to join that live meeting. Uh, so we can, I can answer any questions you might have. Now, when you're doing your homework, please do not forget to show all the steps. Be detailed on this. This is going to be how I know you know how to do it. Okay, so um, I will see you all next time.